Okay, so really quick, because this is a main thing, theme that pops up a lot, uh, we're gonna do a, how you do a t-test uh, given data. So this is one on whether or not the, the reaction time is different. I think it's like number 26, but these are generally the type of uh, data that we will get. So let me copy the clipboard. Yes, that would work nicely. So we have stuff like this. So there, to me, there's usually a couple different ways you could do this, but I usually like to do something very, very simple. Since we're looking for a t-test, a lot of the times you can do t.test, and then it will ask for arrays. So an array is nothing more than what I'm looking at. So what two things I'm gonna compare. So the known alternative hypothesis is that these are different, with the uh, null being they're, they're the same, alternate being they're different. So it's a two-tailed test. So the first array will just be the, this would be the right-hand reaction time. And so I hit a comma, and then I do a left-hand reaction time. And then the, the comma again, and you wanna make sure to do either a one-tailed or two-tailed test. So you wanna make sure you get this because you're Question type will depend on which one of these you do. So you'll actually want to do a two-tailed test here, and then you hit enter, and it gives you what is it? Too few arguments. Oh, tails type paired. Oh, so you're supposed to actually check to see if it's supposed to be paired, equal variance, or unequal variance. Um. So this is the same people. So technically I'm supposed to call it, do it paired because if it's the same subject, I'm just testing left hand versus right hand. So paired. And this should give me my test statistic. Wait a minute. Oh, that's the actual P value, isn't it? So it gives me my P value rather, which is the answer, which doesn't help you. So to find the actual test statistic, let's actually get the book. Um, so that's the cheaty way to do it. That should be my answer. But the actual T value is calculated in a different way. Match pairs, I don't care about that. I want the sample, there we go. So to do this, we need a bit of information. Where did you go? Oh. So to, the formula for this is the D difference minus the mu D over SD of D over square root of N. Confused yet? So. Let me go ahead and do this. So the, what we need is the difference. So this would be this value here, the 104 minus 128. And I would just copy this all the way down. So that's my difference. The sigma D is the mean value of the difference for the population of all matched pairs of data. So this would be something that I would like to find. So in my problem, uh, just time, so let's say I'm using the results. Of course, it doesn't give me any of that in the problem. mean value of the difference for the population. Okay, so for that, I can just do mu d, and that's equal to average of all these. Now I need to do the standard deviation of the difference, which is those guys. 
Why is it giving me a name? Oh. Equal standard debt C D E V of these values. So what we can do at that point is the take it should be the D bar. Oh, this is, I'm sorry, it's not U of D, it's D bar. That's my mean of everything else. So the question itself asking is asking if there's a difference between left-handed and right-handed tasks for individual people. So what would our, my mean of the population be in this case? What am I actually testing for? Anyone have any, any ideas? What would be ideal in my test? Would I ideally, in this test, like to see just as quick of times with my left hand as my right hand? Generally, yes, that is the test question. So if that is the question, then my mu d is going to be zero, because that's the difference. And my, so what I can take at this point, I need that, is d, the difference, minus <laughs> my mean difference, which is not much, over this. Yes. Does it matter if I have, it treats nulls as zeros. So that should be, and let's see if I'm right, the test statistic, which kind of makes sense because everything is pretty significantly different. And it's all towards the left hand, which is weird. Point one six. And let's see if I messed up. Oh, nope, I got it right. So then it wants to know, because it can't just use a test like a normal person, what your critical values are. Um, so this uses a chart. Where's the chart? Of course it doesn't have the chart. So it says, this is a two-tailed test. So you're going to choose this guy right here. So let me look up the T. But to do this, you need one of these guys. Let me get one up. Uh, view image, first view image. Put it into a new tab. So you need this thing. So we need to know degrees of freedom, which is our number of people, which is five minus one, so four. And then we need to know the significance level. So the question itself asks for significance of 0.02. So right there, 3.747, that should be our critical value. And let me put it into the computer. Seven four seven. that might be wrong. Nope, I was right, okay. And that's how you figure out your critical T is just off your degrees of freedom, which is your sample size minus one, and your significance level that's dictated, and just that's where it intersects. Uh, this is one of the reasons we like using Z tables, because you don't have to care about sample size, and you can just go off a normal distribution, but then you can't test between different groups. So since this value is greater 
then the plus and minus of this value, we would reject the null hypothesis that there is no difference between the two, leaving the alternative that there is. And that's how you do a two sample t-test when it comes to paired data. Hmm? I heard someone speak something. Okay. I have no idea what the chat was. So that's how you do paired data. So if I was to do one, yeah, this won't leave the question. With unpaired data, so just as, this is paired data, which is always important to do. Uh, this would be a two sample. So this one, we're going to talk about two sample. So this is, uh, I think, number 25, the height of the presidents, because this has never been done before. Oh, wait, that's another difference one. I don't want to do that. I want to do... Um, so we have in this case, I have a bunch of data on blood pressure. Hey, imagine that health data. So between women and men. And it wants to do the same thing where I want to know is there a difference between men and women when it comes to blood pressure, which by the way, usually, yes, there is. Um, so this one, well, I could, once again, I could cheat really easy. When, which I don't discourage this because it lets you know if you've got the right answer, if you went the wrong way. Um, so this could just be equal to t-tests, And B to the B, B 148. So again, I have to know it's one tailed or two, which this is a two tailed because I'm looking for differences. And then I have to know if it's a pair. Obviously, it's not paired because you can't have a man and what, uh, an individual change their sex at the drop of the hat. It doesn't work that way. But do I have equals? Uh, two sample equal variance or two sample unequal? Uh, generally speaking, we're going to deal with equal, and then you can get your answer. So I'm going to look that my t value is got, not going to be significant. So, uh, samples, yes, I just need the formula, you wonderful people. Okay, so for this, I need, now here my T statistic is going to be X bar one minus X bar two minus U one minus U two, and all that's divided by square root of S two one over N1. Plus S2, 2 over N2. If I'm not confused. So if you're in the book and this thing, it's on page 430. Uh, generally speaking, U1 minus U2 is, supposed, is usually equal to zero. It just saves us time. So what we need to have is X bar one, X bar two, 
standard or uh, s squared of one s squared of two so remember that is the variance not the standard deviation and we need n1 and n2 so x bar one is just the average in this case of the women and x bar two is the average of the men. So this is, you could actually do variance in this case, or you could do standard deviation and square it. It's the same thing. I choose to do variance because it just, I like doing less functions and random math. And then for this one, I always use count because I don't feel like figuring it out myself. Oh, I have a different not range on that one. Just realized 154. There we go. So I have all my stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and break this down into two parts. So the difference in means is the first thing. So that's equals that minus that. So I see a negative number, which means I'm going to be a negative T value. So if anything, that would mean women would have a slower than men. Then I want to do, uh, let's go ahead and do F squared one over M one. So I have this divided by this. S squared two divided by M two is this divided by this. Then I just go ahead and do the bottom equals square root of this divided by this, or plus that, I'm sorry. And then my t would be equal to this divided by this, which gives us negative 0.99 which let me look at the answer is what the answer is and from here once again you just go back and you would find the p-value uh, so if you don't want to go onto the t type table you this is where this guy is really helpful because you don't have to go onto the t table you could just use that and it does work for you so i would suggest that because those tables are annoying and once again, because we're above 0.05, which is our significance level, we would fail to reject, which means there's no difference between men's and women's blood pressure for diastolic. So that's how you do t-tests uh, unequal sample size because we have different number of values between men and women. Okay. See what else I can grab real quick. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Which one's this? Make sure I'm trying to get, make sure I get all of the types again. Uh, 
that sample did this, I already did that. Proportions, let's do a proportion test. So if I have two sample proportion, this goes in a very specific way as well. Let me grab the formula again. Okay, so if this uses that wonderful pool proportion, I dislike how that thing just turns off, by the way. Um, so we have, in this, we have to have a couple of things. We have to have p hat one, p hat two, uh, p one, p two, uh, p bar, q bar, and one and two. And we had to calculate a couple of things. One thing we had to calculate is uh, p bar, and that's going to be equal to x1 plus x2 over n1 plus n2. And then q bar is 1 minus p bar. And for this, we're actually calculating a z score. So what, a couple, so, um, oh, real quick. X1 is uh, successes. That quotes. So successes being whatever it is, you getting a disease, winning the lottery, you know. Whatever they're saying, it means it counts for each one. So our formulas, P bar is this. So you can actually go ahead and start finding your answer to this real quick. This would be this plus this, so P1 plus P2 divided by M1 plus N2. Basically, the total number of successes in both of them divided by the total number for both. Uh, Q bar is one minus this. And our Z score is going to be equal to a big, long, annoying number. Um, so these are usually zeros. Oh, they're, they're supposed to be the same. So that's actually supposed to be zero. So we don't really generally care about them. So our z-score is going to be equal to our proportions, the difference in our proportions, rather. So p hat 1 minus p hat 2. And we take that divided by the square root of this times this, so P bar times Q bar, and that's over N1 plus P bar times Q bar divided by N2. Two. Yes, add one more. So then all we have to do is actually find out all what this is. So we could calculate the p hat is going to be equal, one is equal to the number of successes over by number. And p hat two is equal to our number of successes for two over two. Why do I have p1 and p2 again? Oh, I don't need those. I kept on doing multiple things. So then all we need is the number of successes and our numbers, and it should calculate everything out. So in this one, I have a study of treatments. 
Uh, very painful cluster headache. Anybody ever got one of those things? Oh dear, I'm so sorry. Yeah, there's like the only thing I've heard that's been worse is I had uh, is if you dumb and you go to Australia and you touch that one bush. Like people have committed suicide days after. Yeah. It literally triggers all the pain receptors in your body. And it lasts for months. Yeah. So go to Australia. It's fun. Anywho, we had 149 pa patients treated and 145 patients were given a placebo. A placebo. Um, among the 149 patients who got the treatment, 107 were free from headaches for 15 minutes after treatment. I would take that. And 100, out of the 145, 26 were free. So using a 0.01 significance level to test the claim that oxygen treatment is effective, does it work? I see a Z-score of 9.28. That's gonna work, because it just goes down. Um, that's why if you program these right, everything goes real quick. So this gave us a p-hat one of 0.718 and a 0.179 for two. Uh, it calculated the p-bar at 0.45 and q-bar at 0.54. Put them all into the equation and you get a 9.28. And from here, you can get a p-value equals norm dot s. Terms and revolutions. Uh, I forget how to look it up. Give me a second. I'll make sure I get it right. Uh, no. <coughs> so if we, oh, from a normal standard. I was right, it was norm.dist. So we have, this is our value. We have a mean of one, I'm oh, sorry, mean of zero, standard deviation of one. And we are doing it as cumulative. So, and that would technically be one minus that value. So our p-value is zero which means, yeah, we're pretty sure. And that's how you do uh, proportions. So I think, oddly enough, that's a majority of the homework types. Uh, confidence interval, I did not do that one yet. Let me go ahead and make sure I have that. Um, so to do confidence interval. So the E is equal to the uh, Z alpha divided by two times the square root of P bar Q bar over M1 plus P bar Q bar two. Two. Q bar one, Q bar one, one, Q bar one, Q bar two. So if we're doing a confidence interval of 0.98, uh, so we need to have that Z alpha divided by two, norm dot M. So alpha divided by two, that means we're looking for the 99th, 0.99 with a mean of zero, standard deviation of one, because we're doing off the Z score. That is our Z value. Uh, the P bar uh, is going to be this right here. Or wait, P bar. Wait, where do we get our p-bars? Make sure I get this right. Oh, sample. It is their sample. So these p 
p bar one, p bar two, q bar one, q bar two. So p bar one is equal to your p hat. Q bar p bar two is equal to our p hat two. And q bar is equal to one minus p bar one. And q bar one is equal to one minus p bar two. So we could actually calculate these because we'll use them. Uh, P, PQ1, PQ2 equals P bar 1 times Q bar 1 and P bar 2 times Q bar 2. Because we would use them literally in the, the uh, value, it's just easier to have them. Then we'd have N1 and N2. So 149 here and 145 there. So we do this, we would take this value times the square root of, we have this divided by this plus this divided by this. And that is our error. So from here, we would take the difference in proportions. So we take, uh, let's go ahead and add this in here. Come on, even upper and lower. That doesn't work. We need CI upper and CI lower. So to do the upper, we have to find the P bar one minus P bar two plus my error. And for the lower, that's gonna be equal to P bar one minus p bar two minus my error. So that would be my upper and lower confidence interval at 98%. Is there any questions on that? Because that is the majority of the annoying math problems on this one. Next time I am bringing M&Ms, I am doing the chi square test because we're running out of time and I want to do it. So I'm doing it. Um, so if you want to see it, come to class, bring your own M&Ms, do math with me, and then eat it. I think I'm kidding. It's actually kind of like the most fun thing you can do in stats. Tell everyone to bring M&Ms and if someone walks in, it's like, oh no, we're doing math. So, um, anybody have anything else they want to go over? So, like I said, Wednesday, I'm going to go over the chi square because we've gone over it and all things, but we haven't actually dealt with it. So, I'm going to bring out M and M's. I don't care which kind you have; just don't get like the ones that are dual colored, because that's kind of boring. I was going to get like a standard set of M and M's if you want to do it, or Skittles if you hate M and M's. I don't care. Uh, there's like, uh, like every once in a while for the holidays, they have a, like a brown and a, like, yeah, 